In this tutorial, we'll be going over all of the tools in the designer persona of Affinity Designer and quickly demonstrating what they are and how they work. At any point, you can use the chapter links in the play bar below to skip to a different part of the lesson. And with that out of the way, let's get started. First up would be the Select tool. The Select tool is the most commonly used tool in Affinity Designer. It allows you to select objects and move them around your canvas by clicking and dragging them. To select an object layered beneath another object, you can click while holding the Alt key or the Option key if you're a Mac user. The Select tool also allows you to scale objects by clicking and dragging one of the transformation points. By default, your objects will distort as they scale unless you hold the Shift key, which will lock the aspect ratio. You can also rotate objects by bringing the cursor just outside of one of the corner nodes until it changes into a rotation icon, and you can shear them by placing the cursor next to one of the side handles, which will change the icon into a couple of arrows. The Artboards tool allows you to add multiple pages to your document. You can convert your document into a series of artboards by simply clicking and dragging with the tool. Afterwards, you can change the size of the artboard by clicking and dragging one of the transformation handles. You can then add more pages by clicking and dragging again, or by clicking the Insert Artboard button. The Nodes tool can be used to alter the nodes and paths that make up the structure of a vector object. To use it, click on an object to select it, then move one of the nodes to change its placement. You can also click and drag the edge of an object to change its path, or click on it to add a new node where you can use its handles to change the direction of the path. You can also change nodes from rounded or corner nodes by selecting them and using the Tool Settings menu. The Point Transform tool allows you to transform an object using two placement points of your choosing. The crosshair in the center of the object represents the anchor point in which the object will transform around. You can click and drag it to place it wherever you want, then clicking and dragging one of the points of the object will transform it around the anchor point. The Contour tool allows you to offset an object by adding or removing an equal amount of space around its edges. To use it, simply click on an object to select it, then use the handle to change the object's offset. Moving it to the right will increase the offset, whereas moving it to the left will decrease it. And you can use the Tool Settings menu to change the corner types from squared to rounded. The Corners tool allows you to make the corners of an object rounded. To use it, simply select an object and click and drag one of the corners to round it. You can apply the change to multiple corners by shift-clicking to select them. The Pen tool is one of the most fundamental tools in any vector design application. It allows you to draw objects by clicking to add points on your canvas known as nodes or anchor points. Clicking and dragging will allow you to create curved paths, and you can close the shape by clicking on the original point. The Pencil tool allows you to draw vector objects by clicking and dragging on your canvas to draw a continuous path. You can use the Tool Settings menu to dictate key behaviors of the tool, such as the smoothness of the lines and whether or not they auto-close. The Vector Brush tool lets you draw freehand brush strokes that follow a vector path. To use it, simply click and drag on the canvas to draw your stroke, then use the Brushes menu to choose a brush type to apply. You can even switch between brush types even after the stroke is drawn. The Stroke Width tool is used to apply a variable width to a brush stroke. To use it, click on a stroke to select it, then click and drag on various points along the stroke to determine its width. You can apply as many variations as you'd like. The Knife tool can be used to manually slice vector objects into separate shapes. To use it, click the object you want to slice to select it, then click and drag a line going through it to slice it. To slice using straight lines, hold the Shift key while clicking and dragging. The Gradient tool is used to fill shapes with a transition between two or more colors known as a gradient. To use it, click on an object to select it, then use the Tool Settings menu to choose the type of gradient you'd like to apply. For this demonstration, we'll use Linear, which creates a gradient along a straight path. Click on each point in the gradient and use the color menu to apply the colors you'd like to use. You can use the handle in the middle to change the offset of the gradient, and you can click on the path to add more colors to the gradient. The Transparency tool can be used to apply a gradient of partial transparency to an object, an image, or a grouping of objects. To use it, click on the object to select it, then click and drag to create a linear transition to transparency. 
You can use the tool settings menu to change the transition from linear to something else, such as elliptical. The Place tool can be used to quickly import images from your hard drive to your canvas. When selecting the tool, you'll be prompted to select a file from your hard drive. Once selected, click the area of the canvas that you'd like the image to be placed, and the image will be imported. The Vector Crop tool can be used to crop individual objects and images. To use it, click on an object to select it, then use the transformation handles around the edges to change the crop of the object. The changes are applied in a non-destructive way, so if you want to undo the changes at any point, just go into the layer and delete the mask. The Rectangle tool is used to draw square and rectangular shapes on your canvas. Clicking and dragging lets you draw a free-form rectangle, whereas holding the Shift key will let you draw a perfectly symmetrical square. The Ellipse tool is used to draw circles and ellipses. Click and drag to draw an ellipse, or hold the Shift key to draw a perfect circle. Holding Ctrl and Shift at the same time will allow you to draw the circle from the center out. The Rounded Rectangle tool functions the same as the regular Rectangle tool, with the only difference being that it draws them with rounded corners. Once drawn, you can use the red handle to change the radius of the rounded corner, or manually type a numerical value into the Tool Settings menu. Additionally, this tool also comes bundled with various other shape tools that function in a similar way, ranging from stars, polygons, pie charts, cogs, and more. The Shape Builder tool is used to create new shapes from the intersecting areas of multiple shapes. To use it, select two overlapping objects and select the tool. You can use the Tool Settings menu to choose between adding or subtracting, then click and drag a line through the areas of the shape that you'd like to add or subtract. The Artistic Text tool is used to create a standard line of text on your canvas. Simply click on the canvas to add a cursor and begin typing, or you can click and drag to determine the size of the text beforehand. This tool can also be used to place text along a path by selecting the path, then clicking on it with the tool. The Frame Text tool allows you to generate text that fits within a frame size of your choosing. Simply click and drag to set the frame size, then begin typing. Or, if you want to use another object as your frame, select it, then click on it with the Frame Text tool to begin typing. The Color Picker tool lets you assign color to an object based on another object or selection. To use it, select the object that you'd like to change the color of, then click on another object to sample its color. The Measure tool can be used to measure the length and width of various objects and areas on your canvas. You can choose your preferred units of measurement in the Document Setup menu, then simply click and drag to get a measurement of the sampled area. The Style Picker tool can be used to copy the entire style of one object to another object. This includes the fill and stroke color, stroke size, and any quick effects that may be applied. To use it, select the object that you'd like the changes to be applied to, then click on the object with the properties you'd like to sample. The Area tool can be used to measure the total space or area within a selected object. To use it, select the objects you'd like to measure, then grab the Area tool and hover your cursor over the objects to reveal the measurement. The Move tool is used to move the page around. None of the objects on your canvas will be moved, though, just your view of them. It should be noted that you can also perform this function by pressing down the mouse wheel and moving around the mouse, or by swiping with two fingers if you're using a trackpad. The Zoom tool can be used to zoom in and out on your canvas. Clicking and dragging to the right will zoom in, whereas the left zooms out. It should be noted that you can also perform this function by holding the Control key and rolling up and down on the mouse wheel, or by pinching with two fingers if you're using a trackpad. The Flood Fill tool is a hidden tool that you will not see in the tool menu. To enable it, you first need to have one or more objects selected. Once selected, press the letter R on your keyboard to select the tool. Now, you can click on the selected shapes, or the spaces between them, to fill them with the color that you've set in the Color tab. And that should do it for this lesson on using the Designer Persona tools in Affinity Designer. If you'd like a more in-depth demonstration of how these tools work, along with a demonstration of all of the Pixel Persona tools, be sure to check out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. 
It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. And as always, thanks for watching.